Now for the next Insight Blast, on the stage, uh, please welcome Alison Stuart Allen. So, uh, what a fantastic topic and how uh, uh, much foresight, Lutfi, you must have uh, to have known that we need so much tolerance on the back of our presidential election in the United States. So, thank you all in advance for your tolerance. Uh, for at least the next four years of a President Trump. Uh, so what I thought I'd do in the next uh, nine minutes or so of this blast uh, is give you nine lenses on the U.S. business culture, uh, which might leave a minute for a Q&A session. But briefly, uh, let me tell you what the nine ways are for uh, maybe thinking about how you work with Americans. And in no particular order, one of those nine is the importance we place on getting things done. We call it task. Americans are extremely task-oriented. So if you're thinking about working with Americans and in the business context, you want to focus on uh, getting the job done first and then getting to know them later. So uh, we are two out of 10 on that dimension. Uh, we're quite explicit uh, as a national business culture, and that's language difference versus the UK, is a function of uh, the immigration history we have, of assimilating millions of immigrants from all over the world, and therefore English is very functional in the United States. It's a tool that has uh, morphed over time to become purposeful. So explicit, not implicit. The third lens is the focus on the individual, not the group. So we in the US generally take credit for our uh, success because it's down to us as an individual. It isn't necessarily because we work on a great team or we have complementary skills from other team members. It's fundamentally down to my skills, my accomplishments, my achievements that I've brought to bear uh, in that situation. Next, risk taking. So on a scale of one to 10, Americans are three out of 10 for risk taking. So if you compare and contrast that to, let's say the UK or other parts of the world, risk taking is much less. Uh, you might say that that explains why Silicon Valley exists, why the VCs and the uh, private equity firms and the funders uh, exist to the extent that they do, uh, because that risk appetite in the US is higher. And if you think about our history, that completely makes sense. Those people who gave up everything they knew to be able to sail to the new world, not sure if they'd survive the journey, uh, not sure what they'd encounter on the other end. I mean, those people who founded the country were fundamentally entrepreneurial. Uh, now, their motives were, of course, religious freedom uh, and other motives. But actually, today, we'd probably call those people entrepreneurs. Next is about time. We're very controlling of time. Time is a very important metric in the US business culture. So it really matters how you use that time, that it's focused, that you don't meander, that you get to the point quickly, that you talk in numbers. So back to linking to the other point about task, we are very numbers and quant oriented. Uh, you'll find Americans want the bottom line first, the fuller context, if at all, later. So that's quite a key aspect to the way we do business. Then we talk about uh, where uh, decisions are taken. Is it a democratic process or is it quite autocratic? Generally speaking, you'll find American decision making appears to be highly democratic, highly consultative. Many people are involved in making the decision. At the end of the day, yes, it's the leadership team or a leader in the business who owns the decision that's been taken, uh, but many people will be consulted. Now, you might say, oh, well, what a fantastic democracy uh, in action. Isn't that I wonderful? Yes, it's wonderful. Why is it happening? It isn't just because we believe in the uh, principles of democracy. It's also self-preservation. So job security in the US is extremely low. And therefore, when you make a decision, you want to make sure that you've shared the responsibility with as many people as you can, so that ultimately, if it does go uh, belly up or it does have problems, you can say that you consulted all these fantastic wise people, uh, you know, the big accounting firms, the blue chip law firms, so that it isn't just your decision, but also it was uh, a decision with other people of, uh, of high standing. 
Linear is the, another characteristic of the business culture. In other words, when you present data, you'll need to present it in a sequence. We don't uh, draw conclusions and present data in a circular way or a random way where you explore point A and then F and then you'll go to Z, maybe back to R, and then ultimately explore around it. That's a more circular approach, just as valid. You get some equally uh, high quality conclusions, but that isn't the preference in the US when you're presenting arguments. So it needs to be sequential, A, B, C, D, and that explains why the conclusion is E, for example. Facts over theory. So we will start with data. Where's the evidence? What makes you say that? Defend your point of view with facts, anchor it in facts, and then make the theory work for the facts. Other business cultures in Southern Europe, in the Middle East, and other parts of the world prefer starting with the theory and then show that, how, that the facts support the theory, not the US. Start with data, then go to theory. And finally, about context. So generally speaking, we want to know the foreground. We don't need to necessarily know the full picture, the interrelationships of all the players in the ecosystem. We're quite happy to know the immediate. So one of the ways you can tell that is the numbers, the fact that we talk in numbers, uh, the fact that we're in a hurry. Uh, but also, you can test what your business culture is that you're operating in by showing someone a photo. What Americans will pick up is all the stuff going on in the foreground, what people in other parts of the world, for example, in Asia, in Japan, in China, they will look at the background to inform the foreground. They'll notice the weather. They'll notice the setting. They'll notice how crowded the destination might be. Are there people in the background? So when you're working with Americans, when you're presenting information, don't be surprised if the focus is on what's in front, not necessarily what's in back, or necessarily even the whole picture. So that's a very quick tour of nine perspectives, hopefully in nine minutes, uh, looking at the American business culture and how to build your own tolerance uh, about working with people like us. Do we have time for any questions? We'll have one, question. one question. Any question, please. <laughs> Do you want to use the mic? I was very stuck at the point where you said Americans wanted things sequential, linear, and fact-based. How did they end up with Trump? Does the American, <laughs> does it therefore mean that the American corporate culture is at variance with the American social living culture? Yes, um, very astute observation. Uh, how I, um, I, first, I can't answer your first question about how did we end up with Trump. Um, I think you have 47.7% of those that voted asking themselves the same question. Uh, in terms of is there a split between what happens in corporate cultures and what happens in society at large, absolutely. However, the business culture is persistent. In other words, those values that I just described uh, persist f uh, for, you know, for a very, very long time. And whatever happens in the political sphere, business and making money, super, in a way for business people, supersedes what's going on at the political level until foreign exchange rates intervene and disrupt your plans hugely, tariffs, corporate taxation. But generally speaking, the business culture carries on. So uh, I'm optimistic that for the, at least the next four years, uh, business will continue to focus on what it does well, uh, and let's hope that it doesn't get disrupted too much and that the country brand doesn't get disrupted too much by whatever policies Trump puts in place. Thank you. Thanks so much, Thanks so much Alison. I, I remember the, the talk you gave at the Financial Times non-executive directors club about conflict in the boardroom, I thought it was fascinating. You have all sorts, gender, um, ethnicity, racial, everything in, 